In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries and call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Acts, chapter 5, beginning at the 17th verse. Then the high priest took action, he and all who were with him, that is, the sect of the Sadducees, being filled with jealousy, arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors, brought them out and said, Go, stand in the temple and tell the whole message about this life. When they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and went on with their teaching. When the high priest and those with him arrived, they called together the council and the whole body of the elders of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the temple police went there, they did not find them in the prison, so they returned and reported. We found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were perplexed about them, wondering what might be going on. Then someone arrived and announced, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the temple police and brought them out, but without violence, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come into the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, 
so that it may be seen clearly that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't intend to speak for very long upon this text, but just to point out that every now and then we have biblical texts that form part of our sense of the language. And this is one of those texts, John 3.16. Not only do you see it, uh, especially in America, um, kind of held up on placards at football games or uh, on advertising hoardings in underground stations and things like that, um, but you see it almost everywhere, and, and, and rightly so, because it's an important verse. But one of the things that happens with sacred things is the more that we're exposed to them, if we don't at the same time distance ourselves a little bit from them every now and again, they become just a little bit too familiar. And this is one of those Bible verses that has become just a little bit too familiar. And the word that's become too familiar, I think, is the word so. Because when you hear it ordinarily, this verse, for God so loved the world, what we do is we add the word so much, for God so much loved the world that he gave his only son. So so becomes an expression of extent or intensity. And of course, that's an entirely proper um, way in which the English word so can be used. But the Greek word is an adverb. It, it, it doesn't describe extent, at least not Primarily, it describes manner. It describes God loved the world in this way. In this way. And so we oughtn't to read it, at least not in the first instance, God loved the world this much, as if, as if God was just so enraptured by, he'd, gr he'd grown accustomed to our faces and that's why he redeemed us. Rather, what the Bible passage is saying is, God loved the world in this way, he sent his son. God loved the world in this way, he sent his son. And the sending of the son, particularly the sending of the son to die upon a cross for our sins and to rise for our justification, for our vindication and for our glorification. That is the way in which God loves us. And what that gives us from this Bible passage is not God loved us this much that he just wanted to come and be with us, but rather God loved us in this way. He stretched out his arms and died for us and he rose for us, stretching out his arms to welcome us in to his new covenant. And so we do arrive we do arrive at God loved the world this much, but we arrive there in a roundabout way. We arrive there in a roundabout way. And the Bible passage always invites us to reflect, not primarily on that God loves us this much that he came, but rather that in coming and dying and rising, God demonstrates the particularly sacrificial way in which he loves us. And I think that demonstrates an even more intense and rich and glorious sense of the love of God than just saying, God loved us this much. God loves you enough to die for you. And God loves you enough to rise for you, rising you with Christ in him. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord, we pray for your church that we 
would grasp the height and the depth and the breadth of the love that you have shown us in the death and resurrection and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray that your world will come to understand this and understanding will respond in faith and in hope and in love. We pray for all who do not know Jesus. We pray especially for those in most need of his mercy, those working in hazardous occupations, those who will die today, and those who will be left behind mourning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give thanks to God for all of the prayers answered in this season. Giving thanks for Chris Whittle's recovery, for Margaret Whipp's ongoing convalescence, for Jen's recovery and for all the numerous people whose prayers have been answered in this season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray for ourselves that in this season of exile, we may be bound together in God's spirit. That separated by distance and sometimes a, through the screen across time, we would nonetheless be ever but ever bound in to the body of Christ woven into its fabric bound into its sinews and joined to one another with bonds that transcend all division and all separation Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. O God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Wash me from my iniquity, Lord, cleanse me from my sin. Brethren, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give thanks and praise 
It is indeed right our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and has restored in mortal men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of creation sing for ever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death upon the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and his glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon your people and gather into one all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of Mary, Mother of God, Saint Helen, Saint Lawrence and all your saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honour and glory be yours almighty Father forever and ever Amen Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Christ our Passover lamb is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the peace, the feast.
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>